Nixon variant for radio use. Tracy, I do. I got caught out last year because I said this was an extremely rare vehicle and then a second one followed it into the arena. So I won't be saying that this year, particularly as I know there is a second one here, but nonetheless it is still a fairly rare vehicle. Not that many survivors of these hardtop 101s. Again, powered by the venerable Rover 3.5 litre petrol engine, which in itself was originally a Buick engine. Buick decided they, uh, they could do no more of that particular for late. And then a passing British Leyland executive spotted that outside the offices and said, what's that? The deal was done and Roman took over the rights. And that's been in, uh, had been in production for many, many years, powering everything from uh, Land Rovers. Rover SD1, saloon cars, ambulances, all sorts of And then the second of our Land Rover 101 hard radio vehicles. You'll notice the side and rear entry doors. Fairly low working height in there, admittedly. Not ideal if you're six foot six tall. about the camouflage patterns. It's, uh, there's a lot more to camouflage of this nature than just standing alongside the vehicle and painting uh, pretty black splodges. There's actually quite a lot of science involved in it. The idea is to try to get it to, as you can imagine, blend into its surroundings. So if it's in a forested area, a wooded area, to try to make those lines as much as possible, be in keeping with the surrounding lines, to make it look like trees. layout of the vehicle, powered by, again, the Rover V8 3.5 litre petrol engine. This is, um, Designed to tow yeah. light artillery. Yeah. And these can be stripped down fairly heavily as well. The doors, windscreen, roof, body sides, etc. can be very, very easily removed, helping to keep the silhouette down and also help to keep the weight down, particularly important as they can actually be brought in to a conflict zone by some of the heavy lift helicopters. Used by numerous armies, although designed for the British Army, quite a few Middle Eastern countries uh, procured these for their defence forces, Amman being one example. Very, very common during the 1970s. Nearly all of these were sold off by about 10 years or so ago. Hundreds of these saw service during the first Gulf War in 1991. Did sterling service, carrying personnel, 
carrying cargo, tying artillery guns, and also one or two specialist body bodies such as uh, radio comms and radio repair. The second example coming around with the uh, gloss deep bronze green, tying a trailer. Same 3.5 litre Rover V8 petrol engine, slightly detuned from road cars, slightly higher torque levels, and again making a uh, short work of our excavations around the arena. Generally speaking, a black and green matte camouflage used on exercise or in conflict. Whereas the, uh, the gloss, deep bronze green of the second example, in times of a peacetime, shall we say, regimental displays, etc., etc. and just follow the vehicle in front. <laughs> the same chassis at the time. Of course, anyone who uh, paid attention to geography at school will know that Germany does tend to be crisscrossed by numerous rivers. Rivers tend to complicate the battlefield quite seriously. So a vehicle such as this is able to get from one side of a river to the other without any serious Thank you. 